Hey everybody, welcome to Easy Soloing Strategies, class number 11. Let's get started. So guide tones, what are guide tones? Guide tones are the two most important notes of any chord, of any harmony. And in jazz, as you know, six chords and seventh chords, but primarily, for some reason, guide tones, the music school thing for me, learning guide tones, was all about thirds and sevenths. I've learned now after playing a lot of these swing tunes, the early swing tunes, that sixes can also be thought of as guide tones as well. But you'll definitely see thirds and sevenths because mainly of the resolutions, which we'll, which we'll talk about. So I'm gonna put on the screen uh, the C Blues study number one with guide tones. So one thing that's kind of required here is that you do know that you can spell your chords. And I know I'm, I'm often saying this, be able to spell a C7 chord, meaning C, E, G, B flat. And I do think that this is important, if not mandatory, to be able to spell any chord. Of course, the more you do it, the better and quicker that you get at it. But you see C7 on the chart, you know your C, E, G, B flat. You see F7, F, A, C, E flat. G minor seven, G B flat D F. I just really encourage that you that you grab a piece of paper for any song that you're working on. We'll do this with autumn leaves, and just get used to spelling right next, just right on top here. Like here, I can even do this. I can annotate on here. You know, you just go like this. Go C E G B flat, and that's one three five flat seven. So of course, the theory behind it is. You know, know your formulas for your seventh chords and your two six chords, major six and minor six, but your seventh chords, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven, flat five, AKA half diminished seven, and then fully dimmed seven. Those are your main types of chords. Um, you, don't worry about altered chords or stuff like that so much, but just those ones and be able to just spell uh, every chord. So how do you do that? I think again now now it goes back to your instrument to be able to go oh C seven one three five flat seven again the formula then I arpeggiate one three five seven and then you might go C E G and B flat. Okay. So again that's that's kind of the academic side of it. The thing with these guide tones, as I mentioned, it's the third and the seventh of the chord. So I know many of you, if not all of you, have mastered the grip chords, the routine. Well, these notes, now it's gonna be important to know where those thirds and sevenths are. So on a C blues, kind of a jazz blues here, using dominant chords for the one instead of a six chord, um, you can see right here, I actually labeled it. You have the flat seven and the three. Okay, if you want to play those two notes, you can play it as a chord. You could do this. It's great for comping. I'm just playing through this example. D minor seven, G seven, C seven, A seven, D seven, and then. strictly following that route. I'm breaking them up obviously into single notes, but my visualization is this, two, three, four, two, three, four. So again, um, you'll notice one thing, I hope you notice that on the dominant chord, it creates the third and the seventh. This is very important. It creates a tritone interval, this, or this. Flat five distance between the third and the seventh. No matter which way you go, <laughs> whether you're going three to the flat seven or flat seven to the three, it still equally divides up the chromatic scale in half. 
So it's a tritone interval, that dominant. That's why that dominant. So it's dissonant and it has this unresolved feeling. And that's why when we do these two, five, one sequences, the dominant usually will resolve to the one or it creates a dominant cycle, right? Though what I think is important to show you is a three note shape, C7. And so this will actually be really good for your comp. Uh, C7, F7. These are what I call three note voicings. And yes, I can definitely send this worksheet out for three note voicings, C7. So now you can hear the root in there. Earlier, I didn't do the root. I just did this, the two note shapes, which I love for comping. If you guys know Grant Green, one of my favorite jazz guitar players, that's almost exclusively how he comped, was just two note shapes. He wouldn't use, unless it was a ballad, he wouldn't use three or four note shapes like a, a la Freddie Green or anything. He would just use two note shapes. So. Um, if this is new for you, again, apply this to comping, apply this to your favorite songs, uh, this concept of guy tones. And don't worry, you'll get used to it because we're gonna go through Autumn Leaves next, which is a great, if you don't already know this, it's a great study because you can get the, the experience of going two, five, one in a major key and two, five, one in a minor key. So again, here's, here's what it looks like with three note shapes, C7. F7, this is a 12 bar blues in C, back to C7. And then I'm doing kind of something a little bit fancier, almost more beboppy, a two five going to the four. So the four is F, so I'm going G minor seven, C7. And that gives it some forward motion, and then F7. And then for the F sharp dim, I'm just, the F sharp dim is almost like a substitution for the F7. It creates what they call an F7 flat nine. So here's F sharp. So all I did is put the F sharp in the bass just for this demonstration from the F7. I'm just putting the bass in the F sharp. But these two notes still stay the same from the F7. That's what's so cool about the diminished substitution is that the, you can still think the third and the flat seven and then back to C7. So again, now I'm showing you the bass line because oftentimes if, you know, luckily, if you're, if you're lucky enough, you can have a bass player walking in lines or playing the roots for you. <laughs> and then you can focus on the thirds and the sevenths, or we'll talk about some sixes as well later. Notice, oftentimes a bass player, the very first thing they do is play roots and roots in fifth of the chord, the root, fifth, root, fifth. So again, the root and the fifth is the first, are the first two notes that we can omit <laughs> in our chords. But the thirds and sevenths really tell us the quality of the chord. And I always say quality is not how good or bad, but it's major, minor, or dominant. And that's important. So that's all we need. And for soloing, which is what you're expecting to learn today, some guy tone soloing ideas, I know it's new for you. But what I'm saying is these can also be just thought of as target tones, okay? You don't have to just run up and down scales. You don't have to just run an arpeggio. You can just play a few notes. And I think that's what it's about to go. <laughs> And then you can again tar have a very specific target. I know I was targeting either the third or the seventh to the chord that I'm on. And of course, again, I'm not saying that's easy, but this is a good place to start. Sea blues, autumn leaves, or again, if a song that you enjoy might be out of nowhere or fly me to the moon. Uh, just uh, start to apply this to those songs. And I chose song, and the other song I chose to demonstrate is All the Things You Are, beautiful jazz standard. And that one, the melody is all about the guy tones. So again, the thirds and the sevenths. It, you don't need to necessarily have both of them present in your solo at the same time. I mean, you don't, you're not playing a chord, but you can target those, okay? You can pick and choose which ones you wanna to hit to create a melody. And it just so happens, as I will demonstrate, and we'll do this together, Fly Me to the Moon, All the Things You Are, Autumn Leaves, those songs are all about the guy tones, like the composer. They, I'm not sure if they thought about 
the term guy tones. That might be a little Berkeley College of Music thing from the 70s. But again, they are thinking thirds, how important the thirds and the sevenths are to the harmony. You know, I, I, what I would like to do, what I think is good to do, is just to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All I'm doing there is looking at my guide tone study, number one, C blues, and following one of the lines. One of the lines meaning I'm staying on the fourth string in this case, just because I know how I wrote it out. Oh, by the way, for comping often, especially for comping, often the third and the fourth strings are the choice notes for guitar to comp that, that range. You can move it up to the third and second strings, but I wouldn't do it on the sixth and fifth or the first and second strings. I would just, so, you know, stick with this format for now and get really strong at it. Um, so again, notice what I was doing here. We'll put on the backing track in a second. I'm, I'm just looking at the fourth string and I'm following that little bit of a line here. I mean, I'll yell it out in tabs, okay? And again, even though I went through the whole spiel of, hey, learn to spell, which I think it's important and we'll do this, we'll do that a little bit more because later on I'm gonna say, we're gonna start to extend the chord. I'll say, let's play a minor seven arpeggio a la Wes on the fifth degree. Well, you gotta know what the fifth degree is. So, you know, again, learn to spell those chords, just do it a lot. Um, so check this out, this is C7. I'm playing the fourth string, which is the B flat, which is a flat seven. Here's a C. Okay, so you can hear that. Add your own rhythm. And then you're gonna go half step below to the A, which is the third of the F7. And this is where the fancy term called voice leading. It's a very musical concept. You want to have smooth, close voice leading. You want to have it often be pretty chromatic, half step away or a whole step. You want it nearby to have smooth voice leading. Guide tones will help you with creating smooth, melodic lines. So, so far we have this. I'll try not to talk this time. Two, three, four, one, two. Check this out. See that created chromatic G7? And then this creates a nice three frets chromatic there. And to the top. F7, F sharp dim, same note. Here's that E minor 7. Chromatic. Chromatic. Up three frets. Minor third. And to the top. Maybe add a little more rhythm. We're going to do this with the backing track in a second. C7. Here's E minor 7 to A7. Do, do, do. 
I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth just within that not really uh including or not really adding any other scale tone ideas or chord tones i was just kind of exclusively playing these guide tones okay with rhythm i was doing a lot of anticipation and what that means again is that i'm on the and <laughs> uh, usually the and of if i'm switching say G minor seven to C seven, I would switch an eighth note early. So it's one, two, and, and, and then in the and of four. So you're, you want to anticipate again by an eighth note generally. That's the most common. You can anticipate a quarter note. That's, you can even, you know, be on beat four if you wanted to, but generally it's an eighth note. Again, this is perfect for comping if this guide tone is new for you. I often call these two note shapes. <laughs> you have four note shapes, you have three note shapes, you have two note shapes. And if you do two note shapes, John Pizzarelli is, is one of the guitar players who uses this quite a bit. Um, just, you don't need those roots in there. Um, so again, if this is new for you, you're really going to hopefully enjoy this process of working and adding this into your playing for comping and for single notes. Double check. And I want to do exactly what we just did. Then I'll just show you some things, how you can add some other chord tones to the mix and or just neighboring neighbor notes, scale tones, embellishments, I often call them when I'm talking about triads. <laughs> Sing what you play. Very economical, huh? You'll see a lot of common tones between chords. Here's E minor 7. That's all chromatic. Again. I'll let you guys do it without me. F7. F sharp then, which is the same note. Back to the C7 and then E minor 7. Quarter notes. Let's go to the next string. I added a chromatic. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
come. Maybe just, uh, that's a child's rhythm. This is very important to getting this down, just comping with these two note shapes, the guy tones. And I'm staying exclusively on the third and fourth strings. Da da ba da ba da ba and two three and here's a two five. Actually, I'm, for soloing, I'm actually moving it to the third and the second strings. So, so this is C7 here. The three note, the the guy tones are here. Just so that you know, I mean, again, that's the same as just playing over here. You just have to, <laughs> you know, use your ear and, and find it there. Um, but I do recommend that. I mean, obviously it's not written there, but that would be the next step is to move it around through the fretboard. And the other thing was I said, add some chromatics. Hopefully you caught some of those ideas. Right. Dim. So again, like right there from that C7 to the E minor, you see on the third string, it goes nine to the 12. Hey, put a little chromatic note. Da 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 dum. Da dum. And then it goes from the 12 to the 10, G to the F, on from the A7 to the D minor. Put a chromatic note in between. 12, 11, 10. You know what I'm saying? So, again, things like that. You want, I went a C7. Ba da 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 and then right here, da 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 da. So there, I kind of went. Um, I had a motif, da da, like four three. So again, feel free to add some surrounding notes. I call them neighbor tones, lower neighbor, upper neighbor tones. But really, this study at first, I think it's great to stay within what's written, just guy tone, just targeting those and getting used to that. So I do wanna to go to Autumn Leaves next. This is, we're just gonna kind of apply this to a few tunes. But it's one of those songs that, that I really do think um, everyone should spend a lot of time on.